so going on with our system tour this is your system disconnect for utility operation we repurposed this disconnect uh, if, if first responders or somebody needs to come out here and turn the power off make sure the power is off the whole house this cuts the power off between the backup power inverter and the dedicated sub panel there's our solar circuit coming down in flexible metal conduit this is metal flex good stuff this is a 30 amp generator plug this is a, what we we did to fix the problem so there's now you, when the power goes out you would plug in this plug your generator into this with a safe cord and um, 30 amp dual pole cord and then the bottom of this transfer switch is fed by that outlet out there and the top of this transfer switch is fed by this breaker from the grid and then this panel here this little panel is fed by the battery inverter so this breaker right here feeds power out to that panel first it goes to a disconnect and then it goes into that panel if you if it's got a bypass too if you ever want to bypass and feed the grid power straight into here you can so grid power comes in here the inverter either uses it or doesn't and it goes out through this breaker where it can be bypassed and pass grid power directly through you get in a situation where you need to bypass your magnum inverter There's two ways to do that you can do it digitally through the control menu you press control click in the AC in control and select between another AC in control function these AC in control functions choose whether or not you how you connect to the grid and disconnect to the grid put it back in auto connect by clicking the wheel in hit faves it takes me back to the main menu so on this inverter the way that it saves you money is by seeing the batteries are fully charged and disconnecting from the grid so if you put it in you use this AC in control feature to disconnect it and connect it from the grid and, and this computer can see the state of charge of the battery and decide when it wants to use grid or use battery power so if I take it and put it in excuse me click the you select your AC in control and then you click it in and then a little arrow comes up and you can roll this wheel and select which one of these AC in control features you want and that's where you have the state of charge connect that is the feature that allows this thing to see the batteries are full and connect and disconnect from the grid based on what this, how full the batteries are and the batteries are being charged by the solar so it allows you to use your solar power this is your magnum power track and uh, charge controller that's what's taking the power from the batteries or from the solar and charging the batteries if you want to see what it's doing you can press the select button and uh, scroll through the different uh, see what the PV array is doing on this side and what, what it's putting into the battery on this side if you want to go in to equalize through this you hold these buttons down the power track hadn't used this controller as much as we had the classics but since Magnum's come out with it I've had a bunch of them go in and it seems like it's more powerful than the classics the midnight classics and it uh, seems to work really good I've got up here I got my tracer this is uh, handling that small solar array that the customer already had a little meter and uh, it seems to be working pretty good we re rewired that array it was off of an old uh, power hub or something um, this is your 250 amp disconnect breaker for your battery this disconnects the battery power to the system this is the 2 amp breaker for the battery monitoring kit this is the 63 amp breaker for the input from the solar array combiner to the charge controller input this 100 amp breaker is the output from the charge controller 
to the battery. Um, this 15 amp breaker right here and this 30 amp breaker, these are the input and output breakers from the smaller solar array going to this charge controller. So this is power coming in from the solar to this charge controller. And this is power coming out of the charge controller to the battery. And I already went over these breakers. This is the AC input breaker and it is either getting grid power or generator power. Grid's in here, the generator's in here, and this is a transfer switch. You can see how the transfer switch has got grid power going in the bottom, or grid power's going in the top. Generator power's coming in the bottom from that plug I showed you. And this um, is the power feeding up into this breaker, which is the AC input. And you've got your output breaker that's normally feeding the dedicated load sub panel and if if they need to bypass it it can be bypassed right here this is a lightning arrestor um, other than that you've got your favorites menu I've programmed it the first one shows you the state of charge of the battery uh, the next one is uh, power to the battery from the charge controller it shows you how much you're making uh, if you roll the wheel it tells you different various features of that part and then your favorites menu F3, this is charge going into the battery right now. If it's positive, that means you're putting power into the battery. If it's negative, it means you're taking power out of the battery. It reads in amps. So that's power going into or out of the battery. This is the load amps on the AC panel. So that's how many amps you're pulling in AC on that panel. And um, you're going to need to uh, multiply this number times 120 volts to figure out your, how many watts you're using. Um, next thing right here is amp hours in, amp hours out. This is zero would be a full battery, so plus 14 amp hours would be um, it's put more power into the battery today than it's taken out as it starts to go negative. Uh, like in, if you woke up in the morning and this had been off or been running all night, you might see a negative 100 or 200 amp hours. And as the solar put power back into the battery, this number. The negative number would come closer to zero and then a fully charged battery might look like plus 14 or plus 20. Uh, or when you do an equalize, uh, this number will go to plus 60 or 50, you know, because you'll, you'll, you're cramming amps in it. So if, after you do an equalize, you need to reset it by hitting this two amp breaker, leaving it off for a second and then turn it back on. And when you do that, this will say thinking and this will say thinking because it's the battery monitor is resetting itself. When it's doing that, your state of charge connect won't work it'll, because it'll be thinking. Um, if you want to do an equalize, the way you can do an equalize with the Magnum is if it's in float charge, you just hold down the charger button. With, I'm pressing it with my thumb. And after a couple of seconds, it'll start to say equalizing. It'll automatically stop after four, three or four hours. It's programmed. It's got a set amount in there. There it goes, charge equalizing. You can see it starts using the power track immediately to try to equalize and that's what's cool about the magnum is it uses it knows that it gets to use solar and it'll prioritize solar over grid power so the power track's getting to do all it can it's later in the day you can see the shadows um if you want to take it out of equalize hold down that button it'll say charger standby and then it'll go back to float so hold it down for about six or eight seconds um, these are your batteries, and the light's not very good to show these batteries, so I'm not going to do that.